these are the exact questions that were asked to me in my Infosys interview. So let's get started. So the first question was, what is the difference between before and after triggers in Salesforce? The difference is quite simpler that before is used to fire error messages, right? And after is used to update the related records. Simply, uh, what it means is that before triggers, let's say if you want that, uh, for an example, if you are trying to create a contact, okay, and you want that while creating the contact, that contact must have that active checkbox must be checked. In that cases, you can do it using before triggers. Whereas in case of after, if you want that when an account is created and the contact should also get created, that's where you use after triggers. One more use of the before triggers is used to update the same object, same record. Same record. Okay, what do I mean by that is, let's say if you are going to, like for an example, let's say you are going to check the active checkbox of the contact as true. And if you want to update the description of the contact, in that case, that is same object, same record. In that case is also, you can use before trigger. So let's move to the next question is that, what is a recursive trigger and how do we stop it? Now, recursive trigger is when, basically when a function calls itself, okay? One fun function one again calls itself is called as a recursion usually okay but in salesforce when an event again call itself okay so for an example an after event again call after event that's where the problem creates that's what we call as a recursive trigger usually happens for an example let's say you are trying to update the record in afters okay in after what you're trying to do is uh, in after event you're trying to update the record and as soon as you update the record again the trigger is going to run and again the after context is going to run and again the update will the same record will get updated again because of the update again the trigger is going to run and again the after context is going to run this way you are going to lead to the recursion so basically what's happening is after is calling another after now in order to stop this what you can do is let's say we call it as after one and after two what we can do is we can use a static variable okay in this case i'll create a static variable let's say test okay which will be a uh, static boolean variable okay which will be test and its value by default will be false now as soon as after one is already executed okay after one is executed i will what i will do is i will make this test value as true now okay after one is already executed this means now again because of after one again if after two gets executed i will execute the after two or the this after uh, sorry after two only when the test is equals to false so what's going to happen is after one will execute and the test will become true and then after two will never execute because the test has become already true. So using a static boolean variable, what you can do is you can stop the recursion. You can stop the event calling itself. Let's move on to the next question is that I have written a code and getting a mixed DML error. First, why are we getting it error and how do we fix it? Now, mixed DML error, what happens is there are setup objects. First of all, setup object and there is a non setup object. Okay, setup objects are nothing but user, profile, role. Why they are basically called a setup object? You never update user again and again. Also, you never update profile again and again. You never update roles again and again. What you do is you set it up once and that's it. You never work on it after that. Basically, sometimes, but it's kind of a setup object. You look at that records, so like for an example, you refer that record in other, like for an example, in OWD, you refer to the role in field uh, FLS, you refer the profile. So these are setup objects, right? And on the other hand, non setup objects are transactional object. Okay, for an example, account, contact, all these objects, if you see, you frequently update, create the records inside these objects. So these kinds of objects, which are basically called as transactional objects as well, are called as a non setup object now let's say this let's call this as one transaction this is one transaction let's say this line is representing one transaction and within this transaction you are updating a setup object okay let's say and you are updating the non setup object this is not allowed by salesforce okay you cannot update a let's call it as setup object i'm going to name it as s and ns okay so this is a a setup object and non setup object you cannot do it within the single transaction itself so that's the reason why what salesforce tells is that instead of that if you face in like 
if you're trying to update the same both setup and non-setup object within the same transaction that's where you get mixed dml operation error now in order to fix that issue what you can do is you can open one more thread okay and here what you can do is you can update your non-setup object or setup object whatever it might be i will usually prefer setup object so what i can do is i won't update the setup object in this same transaction instead i'll update the setup object in this transaction and non-setup object in this transaction so both the transactions are deferred by opening a single thread now in order to open this thread what you can use you, what you can basically do is you can use at the rate future method okay and inside the future method you you can update the setup or non-setup object based on your need okay you can update the setup and non-setup or the non-setup object if you are updating the setup object then update the non-setup object in normal transaction if you are updating the non-setup object then update the setup object in a normal transaction so that you are doing it in a different thread so you won't get mixed dml error let's move on to the next question that write an sql query uh write sql query all the accounts with closed uh, foreign okay write sql query to get all the accounts with closed lost opportunity okay so this is quite tricky okay this is a good and interesting question saying that write an sql query to get all the accounts with closed lost opportunity okay now to query this what you can do is select id comma name from account where id in you can write another query inside it select account id from opportunity where stage name equals to closed lost now these kind of questions is basically not to judge your queries but they are mostly used to understand your relationships like how are you understanding the relationships of the standard objects this will test how much you know about accounts and opportunities relations already that is by default relation right you do not create it it's a standard relation how much do you know about that relation how they both are related to each other this is what it defines like it's just not writing about the query but it defines how much do you know about the relation between these two objects let's move on to the next question that can we call a batch class in another batch class such that value of one batch class is dependent on the another batch class so basically let's say i have batch one right and i have to call batch 2 from batch 1 and another thing is i have to pass the value from batch 1 to batch 2 basically this question usually meant that okay now this question is basically means that you will call batch 1 from batch 2 or you will call uh, you will call batch 2 from batch 1 and what you are going to do is you are going to pass the value from batch 1 to batch 2 the reason is because batch 2 value batch 2 execution completely depends upon the batch 1 okay in that cases what you can do is you can make this batch one variable batch one class as system dot schedulable so not system dot schedulable my bad uh, stateful batch one can be made as stateful and another batch two also can be made as stateful now using this stateful you can maintain the value of a variable now inside this finish method you can create an instance or constructor of the batch two and you can pass the value of batch one from the batch one to batch two but make sure that both of them are stateful so that you can maintain the value and batch 2 must have a constructor okay it must have a constructor if you have a constructor inside it what you can do is you can set up the value from the batch 1 to batch 2 by just calling the batch 2 class let's move on to the next question that can we call a future method from the batch class so answer is no okay the answer to this question is basically no we cannot call a future method from the batch class only thing that is allowed is future to queable arrest future to batch batch to future nothing is allowed okay so keep this thing in mind let's move on to the next question that how many batch class can we have at the same time now this question was quite tricky usually we can have only one batch class but that's what i said okay answer was that we can have only one batch class at a time okay usually uh, this means only st one start method okay throughout the org only one starter method is executing at a time okay but by default you like not by default but usually in the queue there are five batches you can keep five active batches inside the queue out of which only one will be executed that's the reason why i said that only one batch will be executed at a time but five batches will be there in the queue okay so this is what i give the answer as now next question is what is the difference between event.prevent default versus event.stop propagation 
now event date prevent default let's talk about first of all that <clears throat> okay event date prevent default it most probably used in record edit form i have used it in record edit form to stop the submission okay to stop the submission of the record okay you can use record or edit form to stop the submission of the record in handle submit you can stop the submission of the record and if you want you if you want some extra values to enter inside your fields you can enter that and you can again reset the submission okay so basically event dot prevent default is used to stop the submission of the record on the other hand event dot stop propagation propagation is mostly used to stop the propagation of the event what do i mean by that is usually what happens is uh, the event okay it usually let's say this is a dom okay i'm not going to uh, write it in detail but this is a dom and usually the event moves from the bottom to the top of the dom that's what we call bubbling of the event now if you want to stop that particular uh, propagation of that event from bottom to the top you can use event dot stop propagation so let's move to the next question now before moving to the next question, if you need any help with interviews or if you need any consultancy of the interviews, you can connect with me one to one by clicking on the link below of the top mat. So next question was are quick actions supported in LWC? Now this question I got a bit tricky and I answered that answer is uh, most probably in LWC usually I think so. Nowadays LWC is supported inside the quick action because I recently used it. But uh, previously when I used to do, we used to first call Aura and from that aura we used to call the lwc component so i said that answer but i'm not sure or you can also check it from your end but uh, I, what i said is uh, no we cannot do it uh, but first of all what do we need to do is we need to override the quick actions with aura and from that aura we need to call the lwc component so that's what the answer that i gave but you can re-verify i think so lwc components can be called within the quick actions because i've recently done it but i forgot <laughs> so let's move to the next question now this was uh, more of a coding question so saying that that whenever a escalation required checkbox gets checked for in case on an account a follow-up task must be created and this task must be created on the primary contact of the account so this was a coding question asked to me these are the ex exact word that they asked to me to uh, the uh, the code was written for whenever the escalation required checkbox gets checked for a case of an account a follow-up account must a follow-up task must be created now to write the query i'll just write the code itself over here so first of all the trigger will go inside the case trigger let's say my case trigger on case and let's call this after update you can also write it better way okay i am exactly writing what i have written in in my interview but you can always write it in much more better way okay so what i can do is for case c colon trigger dot new and then what we did was what I did was case C old equals to trigger dot old map. So basically I'm just getting the older version of the case that I have dot get C dot ID. So using this, what I did was using C old, I got the older version of the record and this is where I had newer version of the record. If C dot escalation, uh, I'll call it escalation. Okay. Is not equal to C old see old dot escalation and and c dot escalation is true okay this means what i'm trying to check over here is escalation is actually checked okay so if the newer version of the escalation and the older version of the escalation are not equal to each other this means i have made changes to the escalation field and escalation checkbox is true in that case what i did was i captured the list of id i captured the account id from the case to a new list of id okay now as soon as i captured the id i captured the id inside the acc c dot account id now once that is done what i did was after this i queried the contact i queried the primary contact if you see it says that a task must be created and it must be linked to the primary contact so for that purpose first of all i need to query all the primary contacts that we have so for that i need is contact con dot trigger not trigger dot name sorry select id comma name from contact where account id in 
ACC ID and primary underscore XV equals to true. So this is where I got the primary contact for that particular accounts. Okay. As soon as I got it, what I did was I created tasks. I started creating task T equals to new task because I had to create the task and I had to link it to the account. Oh, sorry, contact. So I'm just going to name it C dot name and T dot what ID equals to con dot ID. So using this what ID, what I did was I linked the task to the contact. Okay. Now once that is done, I created one more variable of task task list goes to new list of task. Okay. And then basically I added it all and I inserted it. I'll, I'll not do the size checking. I'll just do it. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. As soon as I say this is greater than zero, I inserted the task. So if you see the overall code, what I have done is I have first of all got using trigger.new, I've got the recent contact. As soon as I got it, I checked whether the escalation checkbox is actually checked or not. If it is checked, then I'm capturing the account ID. And based on this account ID, I'm getting all the contacts which has primary checkbox as true. Now once that is done, I'm creating the task for it and I'm linking the task with the contact using the what ID. And after that, I'm inserting the task list. So let's move on to the next question. That is, what is the difference between promise and promise dot all? Okay. So uh, promise dot promise dot sorry. So basically, uh, I think so promise dot promise dot all actually I got this question as wrong. Okay, to be very honest, I got this question as wrong. So I'm reading it from somewhere else. So I'll just tell you that uh, basically promise is basically used to use make the asynchronous call using Apex method or fetching the data from the external APIs. On the other hand, promise dot all is to take an array of the promises. Okay, to take almost all the promises and return a single promise. Okay. Like basically, if you have five, four or five promises, you take the array of all its promises and you only return one single promise that resolves all the promises in the array. Okay, so this was the difference between promise and promise dot all. Next question was order of execution. Now, honestly, you can Google it, you can find it much more better. It would be a waste of your time if I give the answer of this. Let's move on to the next question that is, what is the difference between with and without sharing keyword? Now I explained it and I also gave the real time example. I have recently created a video of which and without sharing. I will provide the link in the description, but which sharing is used when we want sharing rules needs to be followed. Whereas without sharing is used when you want sharing does not need to be followed. For, for an example, okay, for an example, I have a user and I have B user. Okay. And OWD of the private is uh, OWD of the opportunity is private. Okay. Now what I've done is, uh, and the OWD of the account is read, write. Okay. The user can read and write. No problem. Now account has created one opportunity. Let's name it as OPP one. Okay. Now account has account has the access to the opportunity one, but B does not have access to the opportunity one. Now, if I write a code that when an account is updated, okay, update the opportunity as well. Okay. If an account is updated, update the opportunity as well. So in that cases, what we can do is uh, for an example, this account opportunity is usually hold by a. Now, this, if I write this particular code with, with sharing keyword, what's going to happen is that this opportunity, whatever opportunity we have, this OPP one, B does not have access to it. So if B tries to write, use this code and tries to update the account, the opportunity will not be updated. On the other hand, if A tries to use this code, like where he tries to update the account, the opportunity will be updated. So this is how the with and without sharing will work in the real world. I've created the video on the same. I'll provide the link in the description. So this was all, these were all the interview questions that were discussed with me or asked to me in the Infosys interview. If you found this video helpful, I request you to please like this video and subscribe to my channel.